Okay, so I'm going to set up Keyshot File uh, like I did for my promo pictures where it's got a little stand of wood and a little piece of metal and we're going to throw it in the Keyshot with the backplate. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and grab your pieces here. So if I go into solo mode and toggle through these, you're going to see I got my three people here and they're all decimated down to about half a million polygons. Um, you can go lower, you can go higher depending on the fidelity that you want. Uh, and so now that we have that, we have to go ahead and make them a stand and a stick. So probably the easiest way to do that is just to go ahead and just do an append a cylinder. And I'm going to make one to start with. And one of the things I like to do when I do this is go to geometry, modify topology, and I'm in the habit of just doing a weld points just because sometimes when you smooth these things or you hit D to do a preview, you'll get a little hole in there. So it's, it's kind of a good idea. Um, another thing I'm going to do is just use transpose to go ahead and thin this out. Well, lengthen it first and by lengthening it they get the profile that I like and then when I bring it back it's like well it's way too big so I'm gonna go over here to deformation size and just scoot that to the left like three times or so and now I've got my stick I'm gonna hit transparent make sure it's inside my characters where I want it to be here just using transpose good enough and if I need to shorten it I can go into solo mode just tap this top part and then hold down shift and grab this top one here and just do a non-uniform scale using the move basically and okay let's say that's good and the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and append a cube and alt tap that to select that subtool hold down shift and use transpose to go ahead and just make you a little platform here and we'll go ahead and center it I guess and this is kind of small so what I'm going to do is hit uh, using W and hold down shift and just move it out this way and then same thing from here from the middle move it out this way and I don't have X turned on or anything I'm not being that specific but just to basically get this shape um, so now to I'm gonna make sure the stick isn't going all the way through which is good and then what I want to do is go ahead and turn this into a dynamesh so I can kind of rough up the edges a little bit so I know that because I hit a, I did unify which is under deformation modif or deformation Unify, and if you remember when we did that, what that does is basically put this into the area of a of a ZBrush primitive cube. So I know that when I Dynamesh this thing at a resolution of 128, project off, blur off, and hit Dynamesh, which for you, of course, will be under Geometry Dynamesh. I know it's going to give me enough resolution to kind of play with. So now what I'm going to do is go into Control Shift. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go into um, Trim Dynamic, and I'm just going to kind of ding up these edges here a little bit if you want I mean if you want to you can go to the side and do a clip curve and oops there we go just kinda knock these edges back basically the one I'm looking for is just something that's not too perfect so when we go in and render it's not like obvious that it's like a perfect piece of wood down here and another thing we need to do is give uh, a hole around that cylinder here so an easy way to do that would be number one I need to make sure it's smooth so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go into my crease settings here and I'm gonna do crease tolerance I'm gonna drop that down to like 29 hit crease and what that's gonna do is based on the angle threshold it's gonna go ahead and crease any angle that's more than that which of course these are so now if I hit D you're gonna get a smooth preview and then shift D is gonna take you out and when I hit D you see how it's perfectly smooth it's because we've got two fake subdivisions, preview subdivisions in our dynamic subdiv. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply to go ahead and bake those to that one. So now we've got cylinder with subdivision history, make it nice and smooth. And I'm going to duplicate that cylinder off. I'm going to move it using this bent arrow underneath uh, my box here. And I'm going to hit this little second icon, which is to cut out of this box here. So since this one's a dynamesh, and if I merge these together and then I um, control swipe it's going to cut that out so I'm going to go ahead and do merge down so I merged my square onto my duplicate of my cylinder I control swipe and that'll go ahead and cut that out and now what I'm going to do is just go down here to deformations again and do a quick uh, polish just kind of tap polish maybe there we go that's good enough and then I can go back in here if I want to with my trim and kind of rough these edges up or if I want to kind of sharpen it up now I can maybe do a clay polish good enough so let's say that's my board and this is my stick here and I'm gonna share that board and that stick with all four of these characters 
So I think my scene's already set up. The next thing I'm going to do is actually go ahead and launch Keyshot. Um, you can launch Keyshot from within ZBrush, but I've had a little bit better luck launching Keyshot first and then sending stuff over. So now that I've launched Keyshot, I'm going to go back into ZBrush. We're going to go into Render, and under External Render, we need to turn on Keyshot. And I'm going to turn off Auto Merge um, by auto merging something about max faces, slider value, blah, blah, blah. I just go ahead and turn that off so I don't worry about it. And then when I hit BPR, it's going to send all this to Keyshot. Now, because these are all one subtool here, that means I can only apply one material per subtool. So basically, I'll put steel on this one, I'll put wood on this base here, and then I'll put different types of clay on each one of these. If I did want to put like a different type of material on his hat or something, I'd have to go ahead and separate that out into its own subtool. But for now, this is going to work for what I want, what I need to do. So once I have this all set up, I'm going to hit BPR, and that's going to see rendering in progress, and it's sending it to Keyshot. So if I tab over to Keyshot here, it's going to throw everything into Keyshot. So now, if I go over here to my scene settings and I open up the ZBrush panel, I've got this person, this person, this person, and then I've got my stick, and then I've got my base. So just by clicking those on and off, you can kind of turn those on and off. Um, while we're tuning, I'm going to go ahead and turn off these first two people. So I've got my little cigar guy here with the stick and a base here. So let's go ahead and first let's go into our metals, open this down, and I'm going to go to old, and I'm going to go steel, ultra, scratched, and just drop that right onto my stick here. And then I'm going to go down here to wood, and I'm just going to do, uh, what's an easy one, like this light oak, just drag it right onto that wood base there. Now you're going to see it's tiled quite a bit, so under you have materials here, and you also, under your scene, I like to use the materials in my scene just because if you keep dragging, um, if I drag light oak onto this guy, I'm going to have two instances of light oak, which I don't want. So basically, once you drag a material into your scene, if you only want to update that one material, you want to drag it from this little area here onto here. So now the tiling is applied to both of these objects. Uh, so I'm going to double click this light oak material. And that's going to take me to the settings for it. And then I'm going to go to textures, and where it says scale, if you crank this up, it'll only let you go up to 2, and in this case I need to go up to like 12, so type in 12 and hit enter because it's a pretty small object. And you can do box map, different type of maxing. I don't have UVs on this, so I'm just going to kind of have it box map for me. Even though I know that's technically probably not what a cut piece of wood would look like, I think it's okay. Um, and of course you can play with... Um, the properties here, which we'll get into in just a second. Uh, speaking of, if we go to environment, this is the startup HDR image that's lighting our environment here. And so if we go in here and rotate, we can rotate the environment around and it kind of updates, updates the lighting on our object. But if I go over here to environment, I can choose different environment objects or uh, settings. So if I double click this, we're like in an urban setting, he's being lit by a, you know, some Reno neighborhood or something like that. Uh, another thing you can do is give it a backplate image. So when I click on backplate image, it's going to take me to, in this case, it goes to my users, public documents, Keyshot 5 backplates here. And then there's a ZBrush folder if you have the ZBrush link, which I do. So if we scroll all the way down to the bottom here, you're going to see some clay setup ones. And I'm just going to grab a blank one here. Um, let's double click the 05. So that'll go ahead and give me a backplate to go ahead and render against. So, number one, the lighting really doesn't match. So we'll go back to our environment lighting over here, and we'll go to Studio, and I'll just go ahead and re-grab our startup, so just double-click that. And, I mean, that's probably not perfect, but it's okay for preview purposes now. And under Materials, I can go in here, and I can do, like, okay, um, I, I, can material, I can make a material almost anything here. So if I go to um, Soft, rough material that's like this color, I can just drag it onto him and it'll go ahead and render him out with that material on him. Uh, if I want to, I can go all the way to the bottom where it says ZBrush and it's already got some clay in the background here, so I'm just going to try and match that. So I'm going to drag this clay out from here and this one maybe, no, it's a little desaturated, yeah, I think this is the right one. So this one kind of matches that one, which is what I like. And you can kind of go ahead and position this thing around here and you can play with your environment settings so you can tr crank up the brightness, let's try like 1.25 and brighten that up a bit. You can also go to 
your environments here and you can like double click you know shadow pass or overhead panel soft light and just see one that you know maybe kind of matches the lighting that's in the backplate image the best this one looks okay and you can also do the rotation and see if you can get so you can see how the light kind of hits from this way and does a little cache out of the side you can try and find some lighting that does the exact same thing but I'll go ahead and double click the startup one and just kind of rotate it around so the highlights from the left side of the image and kind of casting a shadow although it's pretty diffuse but it's good enough for preview purposes here you can go in here and play around with those and find a better one maybe and once you get that set up the way you like it you can kind of match your focal angle so if I go to camera here um, depending on the focal angle of their focal angle of their lens they used will kind of determine how well your object kind of sits in the image and then this one seems like it works okay uh, one of the things that's bothering me is this is so saturated wood and it's kind of shiny so what I'm gonna do is go into my scene here go to my materials tab double click light oak and I'm gonna actually blend that diffuse with a gray just to kind of knock it back a bit and then I'm gonna make that gray a little bit lighter I'm gonna play with that kind of blend just to kind of knock it back a little bit and then roughness, I'm going to crank that to the right to kind of make it a little bit more, or a little less shiny. It's a little bit better. Um, another thing you're going to notice is everything's sharp and in focus right here, and then goes out of focus here. So it does have some depth of field. So I'm going to click on camera, scroll down, turn on depth of field, and then I'm going to do select a point of focus. I'm going to click his nose here. So that'll be in focus, and everything else will kind of blur out depending on your f-stop. So if I make this really small, it should blur it out more. So it'll focus where his nose is and then kind of blur out along the back as it, and the foreground really as it kind of gets out of focus. Um, if you crank it up, everything's going to be sharp. So crank it down to as much as it kind of matches the blur of the image maybe. And then you can click done on that message down there. Uh, you can turn on effects and play with this. Maybe do some vignetting if you want to kind of do that or bloom intensity that kind of thing and then once you're happy with this render here you can just go to render render and you can do uh, P if you can do a PNG with alpha which will actually give you a really nice alpha render image you can do presets pretty high or I can just type in you know what I want like a 4k render there we go and then I can just hit render and once that's all rendered out it'll end up in your I mean if you have it set up the same way I do public public documents keyshot 5 renderings if you want to let's go ahead and shut this down here and then if you just want to swap these things out just go to your scene um, turn off this dude oops turn off that guy and then turn on uh, this lady and then it, we can go here to back to materials and let's choose a gray let's see if we can match this gray here close enough so now I got a uh, render ready for her to go uh, if you want to render them all out uh, in like a group shot or something all you would need to do is go ahead and you know merge these two objects together make sure they're all you know hit control W and control W to give them a polygroup each merge them down duplicate that sub tool move these things around rotate them around in fact I think I have a version you go to there we go so in this case what you can do is we've got a base for each of them and a uh, steel beam for each of them now if you wanted to you could merge all these beams into one if you're using the same material uh, but if you're going to use a different material for each block make sure those are separate sub tools and then each one of these gets their own separate sub tool and then when you render those out let's see if I have a render yes you know you can render them out with different wood for each base steel the same and then different materials for each of these people here then this is another 4k render and you can get that kind of result you know if I had time I would go in here and UV the wood and stuff and make it look a little bit more natural but you know just for a quick little ZBrush bridge render to key shot really you can see how fast that went I mean we could already do iterations and uh, do different lighting setups and if you don't want that environment in there just go to color and you can just you know dump that down to a, a gray or a black or whatever and remember if you go into render here and do a oh, let's do a really small one 800 by that and we'll do a PNG with alpha transparency and I open that up that'll go ahead and give us an alpha in Photoshop 
I'm going to drag this in here. There we go. So now we have an alpha in Photoshop here, so I can put anything behind here that I'd like. Then it'll just be a nice um, transparency with that. 